I want to bring something else, Michael, and this is a bit technical, so I want the people to bear with me. And I call this, Michael, I call this the B-52 bomber of Hebrew manuscripts. And the reason I call it that, it's kind of cute. So B-52 is the, is the shelf designation in the, uh, you know, the shelf mark in the Russian National Library. You know, it goes up to 1,500 or so, and this is the 52nd manuscript that they cataloged. B, Bible, 52. Bible, right, it's, it's Bible manuscript number 52. I call it the B-52 bomber of <laughs> Hebrew manuscripts. Now, I wanna back up before I bring the name, and I wanna talk about Adonai. The word Adonai, which means Lord, legitimately appears in the Hebrew Bible over 400 times. I think it's about 434, something like that, give or take, times, and it means Lord. Like when Moses prays to God, he says, be Adonai, which means, oh my Lord. So Adonai appears in the Bible about 400 plus times, the name Yehovah appears 6,827, so it's clearly more emphasized and more important. So this is very technical, guys. Bear with me. I'm going to show you this, guys. So when Adonai is preceded by a preposition, I know it's people who are tuning out when they hear prepositions. When it's preceded by the word to, in Hebrew when you say to the Lord, that's La Adonai. La means to. La Adonai. And you get this uh, cluster of la a. And Hebrew does this thing just like English does. You say cannot, you say can't. La Adonai becomes La Adonai. And what happens is the vowel drops from the Aleph and the Aleph is silent. And in fact, it doesn't have a vowel attached to it to show you that the Aleph is silent. This happens a lot with Aleph. For example, the Aleph in Barry's sheet has no vowel. And that's not right. unusual with Aleph. Um, so Aleph in the middle of a word, for example. Hey in the middle of the word, that, that is extremely unusual. It's, there's specific examples where it can't. One example where it can happen, not in the name. But the Aleph of Adonai is silent in Ladonai. Why is this important? The argument is, they say, yeah, Nehemiah, you found this in 52 manuscripts. Wonderful. But don't you know, you're so silly. Those aren't the vowels of Yehovah, of the name. They're the vowels of Adonai. And that thing that you say is an eh, the shva, it really is the ah of Adonai, and there's some rule of guttural letters of why it's not written that way. And if that makes no sense to you, you're following, because like, like that's complete gibberish, what I just, I'm quoting what they're saying, and it's utter, okay. utter gibberish. So here's the thing. They're claiming when I see Yehovah, E-O-A, that that E belongs to Adonai. We just established when Adonai is preceded by the two, by la, by the word that means two in Hebrew, there's no vowel in the Aleph. So what would happen if I showed you Yehovah preceded by the Lamed? Should there be a vowel in the Yud? And the answer is obviously not, because that vowel represents the Aleph of Adonai. That's their claim. And here it is in the B-52 bomber. In this manuscript, we have La Yehovah. And not only does it have the O, which is usually missing, it has the Shva in the Yud. And you can't say that that shva, that i eh of Yehovah, that that belongs to the Aleph of Adonai, because the Aleph of Adonai doesn't have a vowel in La Adonai, La Adonai. It's, the vowel is dropped. So this is the B-52 bomber of manuscripts, Michael. I've discovered five manuscripts that have the same phenomenon. Five manuscripts I found where it has La Yehovah. And by the way, it's not just La Yehovah, it's Ka Yehovah, Va Yehovah, and Ba Yehovah. It's, it's, three, it's three prepositions and the word and. Where uh, that the Aleph in Adonai uh, is silent, and so the Yud should have no vowel, and it has the vowels Yehovah. This can only belong to the name Yehovah, to the name of the Father. It can't have anything to do with Adonai. <clears throat> and I read people, I read you, the, the people, um, the quote from the rabbi in 1896 who says, there's no trace here of the vowels of Adonai. I think I read that. He says in 1896, Jacob Bachrach, he says, there's no trace here of the word Adonai. These are the vowels that belong to the name of the father alone and nothing else. And this is proven definitively by the manuscripts. One last thing, again, a little bit technical. So, and I see I have two minutes, so I'll do this real fast. So when the final hey of, Hebrew, of, the, of, of a word is silent, sometimes the scribe wrote a line over it to indicate that. That line is called rafe. It shows you the hey is silent. Um, it ha in fact, I'm, in the example I'm showing here with La Yehovah, you see the word Isha, which means fire offering, and the hey and Isha is silent, so they wrote a line over it. They didn't always do it, but often they did it in some manuscripts. Now, in this La Yehovah and, and uh, five other manuscripts, six manuscripts, there is Yehovah with a line over the hey that shows you the final hey is silent. Okay, no problem. But if those are the vowels of Adonai, 
the Y, the final letter of Adonai, is not silent. And so there's no way that that line, that Raphael line that tells you the last letter is silent, could have anything to do with Adonai. This proves definitively that this, these are the vowels of the name of the creator of the universe, of the Father. And, I, and I, to, I can't emphasize how important this is because the opponents to this will say, but the prepositions, what about the prepositions? Oh my God, the prepositions. They show you that this is that these are not the vowels of the name, they're the vowels of Adonai. And here it's the very prepositions that prove definitively that these are the vowels of the name of the Father alone. Boom, drop the mic. I mean, so it's over. <laughs> it's it.